Hey guys, I promise we'll get to the hunt right away, but I want you to watch all the way through the video because at the end we'll talk about some tips and tricks and ideas uh, so you can have a hunt like this. Thanks for watching guys. Hey crew, well I did not draw a tag this year. Nothing, no deer, no elk, no oryx, no ibex, no bighorn. No javelina, I didn't draw a tag this year. I'm like still in shock. First year in 20 some odd years that I didn't draw a tag. Yeah, depressing. But, 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 when that happened, I started putting in for all these draws, for the conservation organizations, for fundraisers, that type of thing. So I put one in for the Mule Deer Foundation for an Axis Trophy Buck Hunt in Texas. Well, I drew, I drew, my ticket came up, right? So off to Texas I go. <laughs> I'm still freaked out. You know, you put your money in, you never expect to draw. You don't, you don't expect to draw. You just, hey, it's a good organization. Money goes to a good place. Let me send in my money and yeah, you say goodbye. You know, it is what it is. See you later, money. But I drew a tag, like I actually drew a tag. So I'm out here um, sweating in my hunting clothes uh, to sighting in my rifle, getting ready for the hunt. I have a 300 wood mag. You've probably heard me talk about it. It's like my go-to gun. It's a Saco, got Zeiss optics on it. I love that gun. Uh, it's always been good to me. Problem is it hits really, really hard. And I don't want to turn an axis inside out with that 300 wood mag. So uh, last year I bought a 6.5 Creedmoor like everybody else. And I put some Vortex optics, optics on it like everybody else. Uh, and I've been shooting it a little bit, kind of breaking in the barrel. No hurry, because I don't have a hunt, right? So then when this access opportunity came up, I'm like, ah, I got to get ready to go. So I'm out here sighting in, um, sighting in the 6.5. I've already kind of broken in the barrel, so I feel good about that. So I'm out here using the ammo that I'm going to hunt with. So I'm going to use this Precision Hunter, like everybody else probably, 643 grains. Hey guys, not 643 grains, but 143 grains, and it did the job. Uh, it's horny de ammo. No, it's a good round. Uh, it'll get the job done. I trust it. It's got great ballistics. So that's what I'm out here. So I'm out here shooting, having a good time. Problem is, there's an ammo shortage. I don't know if you heard, but there's no ammo to be found. So I got to be really careful on burning, burning rounds down the barrel because there's not a lot of ammo out there. So what's happening here? It's gonna be hard to see, but uh, so I'm sighting in, side in, side in, side in, side in. Finally got it spun down to uh, four rounds touching at 100 yards. So that's great, right? That's great. But it now puts all the pressure on me. So now the accurate, the gun is accurate. Now it's up to me to put the bullet where I want it. So I'm super excited, guys. Next time you see me. I'm gonna be on my way to Texas. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, see you on the road. Hey crew, well, we're in Sonora. I've been trying to record this for three times, but my phone keeps on overheating. And that's what Kai said. Kai said, yeah, it's hot and it's humid, get ready for it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. We'll figure it out, no big deal, it's only heat. Uh, so I got my license in Fort Stockton, 48 bucks, five day exotic hunting license. I don't know about you guys, but I think I always get that one person that's either never sold a license before or they have never seen a keyboard before. Man, frustration. Anyways, uh, so I guess the plan for the hunting itself is going to be uh, chase them in the morning, kind of rut style. They're going to be ready. And then the evening spot and stock. So kind of like elk. It's going to be a blast, guys. Um, yeah, off to the ranch. Can you see him? Yep. Can you put another one in him? Hold on, hold on. Trying to pick him up. Where are you, bastard? He's hurt bad. 
so <laughs> our stock ninja style worked so um yeah basically we were cruising down the road just got here let's go take a look around not too serious but uh i told kai if we see a buck i will shoot i have no problem no problem at all shooting on the uh first night it's just you know it's, i'll shoot i don't care i'm gonna put lead in the air so uh came around saw him actually we talked to the rancher the rancher said there were some down there so then we drove up the road a little bit glassed him up we're like hey yeah let's go take a look so then we made this big long loop okay it wasn't that long really it's probably a mile and then uh we glassed him up again we sat on him for probably 30 minutes just waiting for them to move and then this big buck moved out he's 34 his long beam is 34 inches which is super super awesome but it doesn't really matter to me he's an old mature warrior super super grateful um i hit him in the pinpoint of the shoulder he was in amongst the does and smaller bucks and couldn't get a shot couldn't get a shot he cleared and, and i told kai let's go and uh, he turned his shoulder to me and i uh i busted him so he's dead and what do i always say um first night last light <laughs> so that's what's gonna happen so uh, i don't want to go back to work but i want to go back to see the family so yeah super grateful mule deer foundation thank you so much guys uh, i literally didn't draw anything this year at all so this was this was awesome so now we have meat for the freezer freezer thanks kai for doing this and uh texas hunting resources for doing this this is really super cool uh, here's a bunch of pictures but how about a little video Hey guys, as promised, let's talk about how you can get to Texas to chase some of these awesome access bucks, access deer. Well, the first thing is put in for these raffles that, you know, the Mule Deer Foundation and Texas Hunter Resources put out there. Uh, yeah, someone has to draw, right? Someone has to draw these, these tags, these hunts, these opportunities. So do that. Uh, another thing is maybe just save your pennies, save your pennies for a couple years and go out there. Another thing that I've thought about doing is getting together with my buddies and say, hey guys, okay, we're going to buy one buck or we're going to buy the opportunity for one buck and five does. And we'll all put in the same amount of money and then we'll all pull straws and see who gets to hunt the buck and then see who gets to hunt the does. That way you're kind of sharing the cost amongst everybody. Everybody gets to go as a group and has a good time and everybody gets great meat. You know, so that may be an option. As far as gear goes, nothing special, guys. If you hunt deer or elk, you've got, you probably have all the gear you need. You really probably have all the gear you need. The only thing you do need to be aware of is the heat and the sun. One thing that I, um, what I used is I used Kuyu gear, you guys know. I used the Tiburon pants, which, you know, they've been around forever, but they recently came out with this, Kuyu came out with a sun shirt, and I really like that. So it's just a sun shirt, it's in camo, super, super lightweight, keeps the sun off you keeps you cool it's a good it's a good item to have not only if you're going to Texas ton access but just in general if you're scouting you know in New Mexico during the summer also be aware that um, you need to get your meat back that's really important too so I could not find dry ice but I had frozen water bottles and that kept my meat cold the good thing is, with Texas hunting resources is those guys have it figured out right so I shoot my buck it's down um, Kai zips, opens them up pulls all the guts out we load them in the mule then we head back to camp and he has this great big walk-in cooler, which I was super impressed with. So he hangs it that night. So he hangs it that night, he keeps all the bugs and the gnats and the flies and anything from laying eggs on there, keeps it clean. It cools it down quickly, super quickly. And then in the morning we got up and we skinned, or he skinned the, uh, the Axis buck. So that was really nice, you know, having that type of facility there. So the meat is super clean, super cool, super fresh. Uh, yeah, so that's the important part. The meat's great, so you really want to take advantage uh, of the resource and make sure you eat and use your meat. So those are a couple ideas, guys, that I uh, would like to share, pass along. If you ever have questions about these hunts, you know, send me a message, get a hold of me. Uh, you know, I'd love to share my knowledge. These hunts are totally doable. Uh, I wish I would have done them sooner. Um, again, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.